Hey, it's Craig and Tom from TC Helicon. Today we're going to run you through backing tracks and sequencing for Voice Life 3 Extreme. There's a whole sort of procedure that you go through in order to get the tracks onto the unit and then to do the sequencing with the track and then to actually get the whole performance off the unit at the end. So we'll take you right through to uh, USB sticks and thumb drives and how they work and I'll pass you off to Tom. Hello everybody. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> You're welcome, Tom. All right. I have in my hands here a USB thumb drive. This is the one we recommend you use if you want to get the tracks from your computer to Voice Live 3 Extreme because that's what you want to do. You want to take those bed tracks that have you know, music minus one, no guitar, no vocals, no harmonies, all that kind of stuff, and put them on here. It's this one here. See how small that is? Beautiful. 16 gigs. So I've got tracks on that key that have just bass and drums and uh, now we're going to import those into the box so that we don't have to have the USB key on the product at all times to browse what you have on the key. Okay. You go into the store screen, you tab over a couple of uh, tabs to track import. So we'll refer to this as a track. And Craig has put on a couple of tracks for us. Uh, the Proclaimers <laughs> and uh, let's use Whitney. So we found the track that we want to import. If you want, you can import them all. See, I just pushed that to highlight it. Ah, let's import them all. So right. that's a pretty slow way of importing them all. There is a select all thing at the top. Does that work too? Well, I wanted to, to show them how to do <laughs> individuals, and then we could select all if so, you want. So this is I was working as along. <laughs> I was working up to that. So if they had a big list, obviously. Oh, Deselect all. Oh, there you go. And then select all. Nice. Okay, it's, uh, you know, we've thought of everything here, folks. So now that we've selected the tracks we want to use, press and hold. And we've got, we've got a little bit of a thing here that says blah, blah, blah. Are you sure you want to destroy the world with one yeah, button yeah. press? <laughs> <laughs> Counting down. So go. And now we'll wait for a little bit. There you exactly, go. there we go. It's, it's going to give us a little bit of progress here. So now it's writing the files from the USB key onto the onboard memory. So to give you an idea of time, it takes a couple of minutes per track because yep. we're doing some conversions. So if you've got 40 tracks coming in, you can definitely safely go have a coffee um, and it'll take a few minutes. If it's yep. only just one track or two, um, we don't have to worry about the time at that and point. And MP3s take a little bit longer. MP3s will take a little longer. The optimal format to use would be a 24-bit, 48 kilohertz WAV file. Stereo WAV yeah, file. Yeah, that way we're not really doing any conversion at all. It's just going straight into the unit and you'll save yourself a couple of minutes. So we'll just do a little fast forward zip, zip through time here until yeah. these tracks are imported. We're going to go and have a coffee. <laughs> so now that the tracks are imported, uh, Craig is going to show you what the performance UI looks like. Perfect. So to get into the backing track player and the sequencer and all that, you use the same button that you do to get into the looper button. It's, it's the layer button. You would press and hold it. Now, of course, I went into the looper. How do I get to the backing tracks? There is a little trick to that. You actually press the looper button here on the top and when you get into the menu here you'll see that there's a loop slot preset and backing track menu and right now the backing track says none as soon as i select a track we'll do amazing mix 3a sure. great um, that's going to be the backing track we associate you'll notice those other two menus disappear because you can't do looping stuff anymore when i go home you'll see a little stop icon right here. That tells you that there's a backing track associated with the, the preset and that it's stopped. And you'll also see BT down here for backing track. Um, I typically, as soon as I've done that, this, if I know that this is the preset I want to use, yeah. I will just store twice just yeah. to make sure that it's there. It's now permanently associated this backing track with this preset until you go back and change that to none and then it would unassociate that preset. Um, when you press the layer button now, Lo and behold, it is the backing track UI. So the way that this works is that the backing track UI and the looper are mutually exclusive. You can't use them at the same time. Right. When you see the backing track UI for the first time here, you'll actually notice we've spread everything out to 10 buttons rather than just the six that we use in, in other cases because we needed some extra buttons. Mm -hmm. You've got basic transport controls down below here. I can press play and, oh, there's a track the one there. we know and love. <laughs> and I've got stop and pause and all those kinds of things. And then there's some icons along the top. So R being record, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. You've got undo. There are unlimited numbers of undo uh, in between store. So if you store it, you can't undo a whole bunch after you've pressed store. But until you store the preset, if you've done 20 things to the track, you can just keep banging back through those undos to, to undo them. You can save the sequence and the performance. There's the home button, so this is just to get you back out. So boom, pops me right back out mm -hmm. the same way that the layer button always does. And then you've got a couple of menu options here. So 
the bottom menu one here, you can see the little music note next to it actually is the track selection button. So if I can go in here, I can actually see the tracks that are loaded into this unit and decide to change tracks if I want to. So if I was standing up and I wanted to use it with my feet, yep. that's a good way to do it. There you go. I'm going to back out of that and just do X here, I believe, which is this one. There we go. Perfect. The other menu that's here is more sort of a functional menu. You've got some storage options, another save option, and actually the option to delete the sequence uh, that you've recorded. And of course, we've sort of hidden that on a separate menu because you don't want to do it inadvertently. The waveform that you see here represents the track. So it actually can be scrolled through with a control knob here. And you can see the little cursor that goes back and forth. Now it's a fairly zoomed out view, so you get a, a pretty broad swath of track for each location this is in. That's but it's 100 percent zoomed out. View yeah, actually. exactly. So the full it, song. So it gives you it gives you a kind of a sense of where you are, but it's not hyper accurate in terms of going in and finding a particular beat or something like that. So. Um, we've assigned the backing track to a preset, which means that when we now we go to this preset, I'm, I'm going to move away from this, um, you can see that we have other presets that have backing tracks or sequences associated with them. And when and we come to this past one... It, you go past it. Yep. This one doesn't. Exactly. So if you press this, you'll go into the looper menu. Right. But the looper. When you get to a track that has a backing track, it's going to go into the backing track player and vice versa with the looper there. And one of the cool things that we think will sort of happen is people will name the preset the name of the backing track. And then that way it becomes the container for the song. Mm -hmm. And it's got the performance and or the backing track and all that kind of stuff associated with it. Okay. So now that we have a backing track assigned to this particular preset, uh, where are we going to play it? Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. We're in, okay, we're in vocal mode, no buttons. Guitar mode, no buttons. You can't play it. It's impossible. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, that <laughs> concludes, Just a minor that oversight. Con concludes the tutorial. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these buttons. We're going to sacrifice one of these buttons, one of these 12 buttons. I'm sure you can live without one. And I usually do the one on uh, the vocal layer. I don't always right. use the micromod effect. So for, for this example, let's use the micromod button as the track start. So what we'll do is we'll go into the vocal edit menu. Hold to go to the, all the way to the end, and then back to button map. And conveniently, row one, <laughs> the first thing we hit see is micro mod. That U means micro, by the way. We're sorry about that. That was just it's all sciencey and jazz. Yeah, it's all sciencey. <laughs> yeah. So we'll just keep turning this until we get to track start, and it's just it's it's at the very end. So you can just turn this all the way, and Bing, you're there. Let's go back and look. And lo and behold, the Micromod button had, now has a different color. See, it's not blue anymore, and it says track. And if we play this... You'll also notice it's dim when it's stopped, and well, it's bright when it's playing. Blows <laughs> me away. So when you start it, and then when you s click it again, that only pauses it. So if you want to go back to the beginning, you press and hold. Right. This goes back to stop, and you can press and uh, hold it from there. So that's how you assign it. We'll store that so that every time we go back to that, let's see what we've used in some of the other presets. Interestingly enough, this one here, the track button was assigned to the hit button. Yeah. And you can put it anywhere. It's probably a good idea to put it to the same one every time on every preset, or you're going to be turning on Micromod when you expect to turn on, <laughs> the, play the track, etc. Now that we've got a track in there, let's do some automation, which means as the track plays, you can automate the button pushes so that you don't have to do that while you're playing and singing. And this is really powerful because this frees you up so you can concentrate on your audience. So in order to do that, we've just imported a track, of course. We'll go in here and we'll record something. Cool. The R button would lead you to believe that that is a recording <laughs> device, and yes it is. So make sure we're back at the beginning, hit the stop, or if, you know, if you're up here or if you want to start somewhere later, you can drop in some parts, mm -hmm. but let's start at the beginning, right there. I'm going to press the record button, and now this will take us out to the home. We'll hear the track start to play, and let's do something like... I don't know, I'm going crazy here. Lots folks. of delayed doubling very quickly. This is going to sound around. horrific. <laughs> we can also change over to the guitar layer, make some guitar changes, etc., etc. Okay, say we're finished doing this automation pass. Maybe we played the song all the way through. We'll go in, and let's stop. Okay, let's have a look at what we see there. Here's the track representation. Ooh, look here. <laughs> Tiny little lines. Tiny little lines. Now, because I did a whole bunch of yeah. button presses in a short period of time, they've all sort of blurred into one big 
um, one big block, mm -hmm. but actually those represent the individuals. If we didn't like that, we can undo that. Yep. Boink. Yep. So that entire record procedure that we yep. just did can be undone. It's not exactly the same as a DAW would be or something where um, it would incrementally like remove the last delay press you did and then the one before that and then the double. Oh no, no, it's the it, whole pass. It, yeah, it undoes exactly what you've recorded most recently. Let's just do one. Sure. Click and click. There we go. So there now we go. more evenly spaced. So you'll even see better if we go out here. There you go. Yeah. And so if you've done it properly, there's a whole bunch of those little guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, Craig, why don't you take them through overdubbing? Sure, sounds good. Um, so when we were developing the product, actually, we started with just the recording mode, which is what we consider a destructive record, which just means it's recording over whatever's in front of it. And I found that for me, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do on vocals or guitar when I was making the sequence. I kind of got my head into vocal land and I was, oh, this is cool. Yeah, and I'll put a harmony here. I'll only do this delay here, blah, blah. Yeah. And then I was finished and I said, great. Now I'm going to record the guitar part. Aw, oh, crap. I can't record the guitar part without having to play back, like redo all the vocal stuff and the guitar stuff at the same time. And now that's perfectly well and good if you're already used to doing that sort of dance on the product, if you already have the songs rehearsed and all that kind of stuff. In a more exploratory sort of nature, using overdub is really nice because now I could say, okay, you know, Tom put in this delay here at the right time on vocals. I want to go back to the beginning. Now I don't want to overwrite what that movement has done. I want that to still happen, but I say want to put in a guitar change at the same time, or maybe add another vocal effect in there. Mm -hmm. I can press and hold the record button, and you'll see it turns into overdub mode, which has a circle in the middle of it there. Now when I press record, it's going to kick me out the same way it does, but I can go to the guitar layer, which I'm on here, and I can do, or I'll go to vocal because he had guitar recorded, and I put delay and double, turn those on and off, go back to the guitar layer maybe, do some drive, come back out and I'll stop it. So as you can see, it allows you to add things to what's going on. Now there's a good way you can fix stuff that way. So if you were slightly late on the change, an overdub is usually a good way to do the addition. So you say, okay, I, I hit the harmony button two seconds too late, but everything else up to them was good. And maybe there's some things later on. I don't want to screw those up. Yeah. You can go in and you can overdub and just put the harmony right on the right beat. If it was early, then what you want to do is go in and do the other recording version, the replace mode, and replace it because you want to record you doing nothing <laughs> up until the right time to punch the thing in. So uh, good little tip there to flip back and forth between those modes. So the sequencing thing is, is great for when you want to turn things on and off, but what if you want to change the harmony, for example? In this preset, we've got two voices above you, but perhaps in this section of the song, I want to change the harmony to just one voice above me. So you'd change presets. I would change presets, and you can't really do that when you're using <laughs> sequencing. So I set you up for that one. Well, sorry. Yeah, thanks for setting me up. <laughs> that was a good segue. And anyway, what you do is you make a step. Press right. step first. Yeah. And then you go to the preset. You know, either way that yeah. you want to copy from. And in this case, preset number two is a single third above, which is my favorite preset, as you probably know. We'll accept that. Boink. And now, too high has two steps as you can see here, and I can yeah. step back and forth between them. And those are completely independent presets. Every setting, everything within a normal preset, right. it's just a preset nested within another preset. So once you've done all that, you've got everything arranged the way you want it, your steps are changing, your effects are changing when you want them to, you now want to save it, obviously, mm -hmm. and we, we showed you that a little bit on the UI, but we'll yep. actually do it here. Yep. So I'm going to press the Micromod button, so that I'm going to do save, go save, yep. it is now saved. From there, the only thing that left to do, obviously, is either play with it, use it, keep it in the box, mm -hmm. or you can export it. And when we export the package, it actually contains the preset that you used, or presets, like a preset including the mm -hmm. steps, and the audio track itself, and the sequencing information. So it wraps up absolutely everything yeah. into a package that you can then back up and then bring back into the unit later on. So let's show you how to do that. We're going to go up into this menu in the top corner here, and we've got this little to the USB key arrow there. I'm just going to push it. And it's going to say exporting, and it'll take a second. And once that's done, it'll actually be on the USB key and especially wrapped up. It's kind of like a zip file. It just sort of holds it all together in one container. When I plug that uh, that USB key in later on, I can go to a, a import a performance, and that will bring everything in, and it gives me the ability to uh, to show which preset it goes to and name it and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's really and cool. And share it. And share it, which is great. Yeah. Uh, quick little caveat here: we are not responsible for any kind of sharing of copyrighted material. If you share copyrighted material, and go to jail. It is not our fault. <laughs> and hey, look, we're done. I covered enough time. Man, you there. said that fast. <laughs>
<laughs> I could go faster probably if I practiced it there. All right, so now we're kind of at the end of the actual import a track, create a sequence, export the sequence. There's one other thing that we should talk about that's really key to this whole product and, and what we've done with Voice Live 3 Extreme, which is recording directly to the USB stick in stereo. Mm -hmm. So Tom, do you want to cover that one for us? How many times have you, have you been at a gig and you're recording, and, or not recording, you're, you're playing for your audience, singing great, the band sounds great, um, and you want to record that? Well, we've provided that feature in here. So now, if you press and hold these two buttons, you've got Audio the recording. ability Initialize. to record directly to the USB key, which mm -hmm. is cool because anything that comes out these two stereo outputs here um, actually goes to the USB key. So all your vocals, all your guitar, any track that you might have been playing to, or looping. anything like that, looping as well. So yeah. you can export it all to the USB key, take it off, take it, put it on your laptop, mm -hmm. put it on your desktop computer, and then have it and share it with your friends. So Thanks so much for joining us today. It's been really cool to be able to bring you Voice Life 3X. As Tom said earlier, it's really literally changed the way it feels to play oh, yeah. through one of these units. Definitely. You don't notice how you have to remember how to press the foot switches at the right time when you're playing. You get kind of used to it and it just becomes yeah. the thing. And then all of a sudden that goes away and you have this completely different emotional connection to what's going on. And you know, I, I really can't overstate how different it is to use this thing. So you really should grab one, try it out, do some sequences for yourself, and I think you'll have a really fun time. Practice up on communicating with your audience too, because you're gonna have to now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, no more. Welcome to our show. <laughs> Take care.